everyone! We're going to be starting off this week by talking about creating a comfortable online environment. Let's start by talking about how to keep it aesthetically, organizationally, and visually helpful to your users. Keep it simple. Let's face it, we've all seen those horrible websites with four columns, nonsense graphics, and what seems to be infinite scrolling. We've also all been confused at one point or another, even in the best designed online spaces. It's unlikely, no matter what you do, that your OLE will be foolproof. But there are a few principles to keep in mind as you shape your learning spaces. Now, I know that online spaces are full of options to get creative. And as an instructor, it is absolutely your prerogative to get creative. And I encourage you to do so. However, the basics of website design should still be something to keep in mind. So, one, minimalize clutter. The less clutter on a page, the more clearly your learners will be able to see what they need to do. Two, keep the themes you choose simple and appropriate to your learners. Themes are pre-coordinated site designs that can cover anything from color palettes to organization of content boxes to cover images. These are especially helpful when short on time or skills at coding your own work. That said, if you decide to choose a pre-coordinated theme, choose a simple one. One that makes the most clear sense for your learners and meets their needs. Not all themes are appropriate to classrooms, especially if you're working with a site like WordPress. Another thing to keep in mind is that your organization may already have a theme or colors that they require to be used in any work of that organization. Remember the section on style guides in the content creation module? This is where you should ask to see a style guide. Like choosing themes, keep your color schemes limited to certain colors so that there is consistency in your OLE. You can get creative in all of this, but let's not lose track of who your students are in the effort. Keep your OLE easy to navigate. Navigation panes, menus, or boxes must be visible and the language clear. It's also important to maintain the integrity of the links. Usually this isn't too much of an issue, but remember to check them with each update to your OLE. Navigation should also be easily accessible. This is especially important the more pages you add to a website. Try to make sure that no matter where a learner is on your site, they can access navigation and find their way back to other main pages. Often, this is where your choice of appropriate theme comes into play. Remember in the content creation module when you worked on your storyboard or outline for a particular piece of content? You can apply the same methods to planning out each distinct page of a website and how they are ordered and nested. A hierarchical outline can help you plan how the pages of your OLE will be organized. Then storyboards can help you plan out the layout of each page. Whenever possible, Try to create no more than two columns on a page. This will mean less eye strain and less confusion for your learners. It will also force you to unclutter your OLE. More importantly, the two columns should be functionally different. Perhaps one column is for content, but the other column is for calendar and contact information. The differentiation and function are what will make your OLE clear and organized. Another aspect of good web design is that you avoid excessive scrolling. The attention span in the online classroom is a difficult thing to deal with, but by keeping the eye moving to new pages, you can help to keep the interest going. In short, work with short online attention spans, not against them. One way to do this is to keep one activity per page. For example, there may be an agenda page, a blog post page, or a research page. If you do this, the learner has less to sift through while scrolling to get to what they want. Rather, they can directly navigate to the page that fits their need. This will make the site feel easy to use and customize to them. Of course, this is all about balance, and it may not always be possible to customize a site in this way. As far as content, just like you learned in the cre content creation module, a balance of multimedia can only help to keep the interest and attention of your learners. This time, it is about the presentation of the site itself. By balancing the site's text with images, you can create visual interest that works with short online attention spans 
and with the variability of delivery of content that you learned about in content creation. Here is a basic example of a website I created as a gathering place for millennial managers to share their stories and insights. I like to think I've kept it pretty simple. The navigation is clear in the main menu and in a side column to other locations on the site. I've kept it to two columns that are functionally different, with one creating the bulk of content and two lending itself toward navigation and other administrative information. I've also attempted to keep a balance of media with a large banner at the top, as well as limiting the number of blog posts visible to five, though at the moment this sample only contains one post. At the end of the day, the objective is to customize it for learners, to make it easy for them. Hopefully, a few of the tips and strategies here help you to make some good choices for your classrooms. Design for Learning has been made possible by a grant from the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services, along with project partners at SCLRC, ESLN, and the iSchool at SU.